In this video, we'll install the ProRender plugin for Houdini. ProRender is a fully-fledged GPU accelerated path tracer. It's released and updated by AMD and is a fully open source project. It's also been natively implemented in applications like SolidWorks, Modo and Cinema 4D. The version of the plugin which we will be using uses OpenCL and will run on any graphics card. The OpenCL version has been in development since around about 2016. There is also a Vulkan based real-time version of this, which uses a hybrid rasterization ray tracing system. This has been around since about March 2018, and this was when they rebranded their SDK. The Vulkan version is for game development, and we will not be using it. The Houdini plugin is designed around USD and will work with Houdini's Solaris system. ProRender is part of a suite of three SDKs. All three SDKs are open source libraries. The first of these libraries is called ProRender, and this is the actual renderer itself. The second library is called Rays. This is a ray tracing library and is used to implement GPU based ray tracing. This can work for OpenCL, DirectX, or Vulkan. This is analogous to NVIDIA's Optics. The final library is called Image Filter, and this contains various post processing filters, things like tone mapping, motion blur, depth of field, bloom. It also has a denoiser for cleaning up ray tracing, and it has an upscaler. This is similar to DLSS, which is basically NVIDIA's branding for an upscaler. It's also a similar process to what is used on a lot of Blu-ray players when you're using DVD upscaling. I won't go into any more detail on these SDKs as they're not actually relevant for us, but it is a good idea to understand the ecosystem that you're working with before trying to implement it. If we scroll down, we'll get the full integrations of ProRender, and then after those, we'll get the plugins. These include software like Houdini, Blender, and Unreal Engine. Of course, at the moment, we're only interested in Houdini. Finally, there is a gallery which will show you what ProRender is capable of. I will now go to the plugins and select Houdini. We'll scroll past most of this page. I'll take a very brief look at the features, but I will not go through them all. Under rendering, we'll see that we have support for open VDBs. There is denoising, there's adaptive sampling, Solaris integration. Under materials, we'll see that there is support for the principal shader. There is support for rat textures, as well as displacement and volume shaders. Next is lighting. It integrates with Solaris and supports all the lights under the LOPS context. There is also support for IES slides and emitter materials. One thing that isn't mentioned here is that it currently has better support for caustics than Karma. The cameras are pretty much as expected. We do have support for depth of field and motion blur. And for the workflow, it's pretty much an integration into the Solaris workflow. I can then scroll down to the downloads where it will redirect us to a downloads page. I will then scroll down till I find Houdini. I'll select the Windows button and it'll send us to the Git repository. At the top of the page, you'll have the latest releases for ProRender. The releases will include pre-compiled versions. There will also be source code if you want to compile it yourself. It is also a good idea to make sure that your version of Houdini is not older than the latest version of this plugin. I'll be downloading the 18.566 version of the Houdini plugin. I've downloaded the package and I've opened the archive with 7-zip. You'll see that it contains another tarball file. If I enter that file, we'll see a directory. This directory actually contains the entire ProRender install. To install it, all I have to do is copy this directory to the place I want it to be installed. In my case, I'm going to copy it directly to the C drive. We can enter the directory and take a look at the folder structure. Houdini will reference this through its plugin system, and it will specifically be looking for this root folder, the Houdini folder, 
and the libs folder. Here is my installation. I have merely copied this directory directly to my C drive. There are two ways of installing it. The first will be to use a Python script and the second will be to follow the instructions in the install.md file. Houdini uses a package system to install plugins. This system allows you to register environment variables in a JSON script. These plugins will usually be stored in your documents folder under the Houdini folder and that will have a packages folder in it. In the install.md file look for this piece of code. We are going to copy and edit it in a text editor. Now I've opened a new file in Visual Studio Code. You can use any text editor including applications like Microsoft Word or Notepad. What's most important is that the file is saved with the correct extension. In this case it will be .json. I paste the code that I've copied from the install.md file. I'm then going to save this file. By default Houdini will store things like packages and preferences in the documents directory and this will store a folder for Houdini and the version you are currently on. Under this folder you'll look for packages. This will be consistent unless you have specified a custom installation. I will save this file as rpr.json. The important thing here is the extension is .json. We'll only need to change one thing in this code. On the line where it says rpr, there are two quotation marks containing the text path to the package. All we need to do is copy our installation path and paste it where it says path to package. I'll then go to my installation in Windows Explorer. I'll click on the file path and I'll copy it. I can then paste this into my JSON file. There's one small thing we need to fix. We need to change the backslash into a forward slash. We can then save that and our plugin should be installed. You can also install the plugin with Python. To do this you'll need to have Python installed. First you'll need to open the command prompt. Then you'll need to navigate to your installation directory. Since my installation is directly installed in the C drive, I'll use cd dot dot to navigate back one directory. And I'll repeat this again. I will then say cd, type in h, and then press tab for to automatically find my installation directory. In this directory there is a Python script, and this is called activatehoudiniplugin.py. We can run the script by typing in Python, then I can select the script by typing in A, and then pressing tab to go through all the scripts. As this is the only file that starts with A, this should be the first one that appears. I can then press enter. And unless any errors are shown, the plugin should now be installed. I can then go to the packages folder. Once again, this is under documents, my current version of Houdini, and then packages. There are now three packages here. The first is the SideFX Labs package, which I installed through Houdini. The second is the rpr.json file, which is the file we created. And the third is rpr for Houdini, which is the file that was created through Python. The RPR and the RPR for Houdini files should be identical and we'd only really need one of them. I can then open the RPR for Houdini file to take a look at it. This file is basically identical to the file we created. The only difference is this is on a single line where the other file has been indented to make it more readable. I can then start Houdini. We can then create a basic scene. This is just a test to see if things are working correctly. Ideally you'd set up your scene properly in Solaris. I'll add a grid and I'll add two spheres. Both of the spheres will be a polygon mesh. I will then position the spheres in the scene. I'm going to position one in the geometry context and the other in the object context. Ideally, you should actually be positioning both of these in your LOPS network. I'll then add a LOPS network. We can then enter this network and I'll make three SOP import nodes. I'll set the first of these to be my second sphere. 
The second one will be set to be Sphere 1. The transformations on Sphere 2 were made in the object context, and as you can see, they are not affecting the LOPs. This should be obvious, and as I said, you should actually set these transformations in LOPs, but this is not actually a serious scene, it's just testing. I can then return to LOPs. If I click on my viewport options, we have Karma, which is of course the standard Solaris renderer. As there is no lighting, this will give us a rather unimpressive rendering of the sphere. We can then go back to the viewport options, and at the bottom of the renderers, you'll see RPR. I can then select this to get an unimpressive rendering from ProRender. I will then get a merge node and connect my SOP import nodes. When I select this merge node, I should now have all the objects rendering. We can then add a few lights to the scene. I will leave the first one as a point light. I'll set the second one to an area light. If we look at the spheres, you can see that they look very faceted. This is something which is specific to ProRender. If we change the renderer over to Karma, you'll see that they appear smooth. The reason for this is that ProRender is not calculating normals for us when we have not provided them. I'll go to one of our spheres. I will add a normal node to the end of this network, and I'll set that node to be the currently displayed node. I can now return to LOPS, and I can set the renderer back to ProRender. The sphere is now being smoothed as I would expect. So that's the basic setup to get started with ProRender. Hopefully you'll find the installation easy enough. ProRender is a fantastic renderer, especially as it's free, and I hope you'll enjoy playing around with it.